Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, September 11, 2016, and I hope you're having a beautiful day. Um, I have a couple of devotionals today, but um, I'd like to um, I'd like to address an issue. I've seen that a uh, couple of places uh, that people have responded to my declaration that. I'm a Levite, and uh, they they they're saying that I'm not rightly dividing the word, and uh, that I'm a Gentile, and uh, you know I understand where they're coming from. If you just look at um, the Bible and your relationship to the word, yes, that probably would be correct. But when you have a relationship with the Father. I have asked the Father what my lineage is because of my life and how restrictive it was. And this is what the Father told me. I have back and forth with the Father. And um, this only shows me, and this is not an insult to you, but this only tells me that you don't have an intimate relationship with the Father where the Father will tell you things if you ask Him. And um, uh, I believe my father. So it doesn't matter to me what you believe. You don't know my life. You don't know the history of my life. And uh, we all come from some um, ancestor lineage, you know. We're all descendants of Abraham J J and Jacob and Isaac. We're, we're, we're descendants, you know. So it um, doesn't matter where in the world you were born. Uh, we all come from some tribe and um, yeah I just want to set the record straight on that that um, you know you shouldn't really come on my thread and try to disqualify what the father has told me um, and you know I just tell you nicely but if you continue I just block you because you don't understand what you're doing in your own ignorance. And that's all I have to say about that. Um, today is 9-11. Again, another year. We're reminded, we're always reminded of uh, that horrific tragedy and all the people that perished. And... Um, I'd like, I'd like in my prayers today to ask the Father to console and to comfort the families that are still grieving from that horrible event and to um, bring justice to the ones who perpetuated it. Um, I have <clears throat> these two devotionals, and I'd like to see the Our Father. So please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for another day. Thank you for my ministries and the people that you brought here. Uh, thank you for the fools that you've brought here too, that strengthen my uh, re response to them and the wisdom that you bestowed upon me and how I handle them. Thank you for those people too. Um, thank you, Father, for, for all the wonderful people that you brought into my ministries and for answering prayer. And thank you, Father, that we have another day to serve you. Uh, and we, we wait patiently for your return. Father God, Jesus, we can't wait uh, to see you split those clouds and come and take us home. Praise you, Jesus. We love you and adore you so much. 
Amen. Okay, and this one is, is uh, a call to repentance. The sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. And that's from 2 Corinthians 7.10. There are three words that describe the process of repentance. Recognition, agreement, and commitment. Recognition comes as we study scripture and learn what God identifies as sin. Until we acknowledge that our actions are wrong, we won't see any real need to confess them to Him. Next, we must agree with the Lord's assessment of our behavior. Without agreement, our confession would be more about the consequences of our sin rather than genuine remorse over violating His holy standard. And finally, commitment is also necessary. We must dedicate ourselves to turning away from sin by choosing to walk obediently in the manner God commands, knowing that He will empower us to do so. Remember, Christ promises that when He sets you free, you'll be free indeed. And you could read about that in John 8.36. This means that when you belong to Jesus, you can change permanently. You can be completely liberated from the bondage that enslaves you. Therefore, repent fully so that you can experience the abundant life he created for you. And here's a prayer we can say. Lord, I recognize my sin. I agree with what your word says about it, and I commit my life to you. Amen. Yeah, a lot of people think that when they say the salvation prayer that you know, they don't understand that there are these components that have to be present in, in the action that you take to the Lord. The, the recognition of that you're a sinner. You have to be in agreement. And then you have to make a commitment in order for you to be saved. That's why some people don't... Uh, they don't know if they're really saved or not. Maybe it's because some of these were not present when they came to the Lord. These are present when you are broken. Okay? If you just if you say the salvation prayer just out of fear of the Lord, you're not really born again. It it, it doesn't work that way. It has to come from brokenness. You need to be at the end of your rope and poured out. It's not a mental decision. It's a spiritual pull that you realize you can't do it anymore on your own. And you acknowledge that the pain and the suffering and the bondage that you're in is from giving your allegiance to Satan. This is a transfer of allegiance. That's really what it is. So if you uh, don't understand the Lord, if you can't fully communicate with the Lord, if you think that you're saved because you just recited a prayer, you might want to replay this devotional and study it. And then look towards yourself and see if that if this was present uh, when you came to the Lord. If not, you need to pray to the Lord to break you. So then you can come to Him with recognition, agreement, and commitment. There's always another chance. We're still breathing. We're still here. There's another chance. Amen. The next one is called for your growth. I have directed you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in upright paths. And that's from Proverbs 4.11. 
Are you experiencing the fullness of the Christian life? There is so much more to having a relationship with God than simply having your sins forgiven. In order to grow, you must be willing for the Father to speak to your heart and direct you through faith stretching situations. Faith stretching situations. When you when you stretch tight muscles, what do you feel? Pain, right? So there's a little bit of that involved with the stretching. Friend, you cannot count on the fact that whatever the Lord allows in your life is for the purpose of increasing your intimacy with him. See, so the more intimate you become, the more you were letting the Lord stretch you. If, you, if you've ever taken a karate class or a you know, dance class, they always stretch and warm up those muscles and you have to stretch those muscles in order to get into those positions. Okay, If you don't stretch, you won't be able to achieve the different positions that you're supposed to get into. And this is a similar thing. If you don't stretch your faith and have that little bit of pain, like when you stretch your muscles, they hurt, then they, they become more pliable, more flexible. And you're able to get into to those positions and spiritually you stretch, you stretch, your, 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 your faith is increasing, you have more communion with the Father. Friend, you can count on the fact that whatever the Lord allows in your life for the purpose of increasing your intimacy with Him. So when you face trials, you must make decisions that require strength and wisdom far beyond your own. It's because He wants you to seek Him through His Word and in prayer. Likewise, He asks you to pay attention to the promptings of His Holy Spirit and be confident He'll work through your obedience to him in an awesome way. Friend, no one loves you like God does. So trust him to lead you to the abundant Christian life by acknowledging him in everything. Even when faith-stretching situations arise, he will surely bless you abundantly as you seek and serve him obediently. And here's a prayer we can say. Lord, thank you for leading me into the abundant Christian life. Help me always trust your will and your ways. Amen. Amen and amen. No pain, no gain. It's in everything. Even in our walk with the Father. You know, you go to the gym, they say no pain, no gain. You walk on with Christ, no pain, no gain. You got to be stretched. You, you weren't born, uh, you know, you weren't born holy. You have to, it's a process. And um, everybody is in a different place, you know. Everybody is, it's like a million steps and everybody's on a different step. So, uh, you know, when you talk to people, other Christians, you know, you have to be aware of that. You don't you don't judge people based on your own um, where you are spiritually because you may be more advanced and you just assume that everyone else understands what you understand. But you were stretched more than they were so far. So you 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 know more. You're you're um, you're at a different level spiritually with the Holy Father and um, this is all working out your salvation with fear and trembling listen um, when the Lord sent Jesus to give us a way to be saved he didn't throw away his rules he didn't throw away his holy commandments he didn't throw away all that he said Okay, he just gave us away. So we didn't have to sacrifice animals anymore. Jesus was a one-time sac sacrifice, a holy, the Lamb of God who, who gave his life for us 
so that we could have eternal life. But that is not a license to have a free for all and sin. And it doesn't erase that dispensation that's still very, very alive and kicking. And we still need to learn from that. So um, have a beautiful day in the Lord. Have a blessed Sunday. I love you. Jesus loves you. Never forget that.